Hi everyone, in this video I'll be installing Parrot OS on a separate disk without using a USB drive or DVD. Parrot OS is a Debian based distribution designed for security, privacy, and digital forensics similar to Kali Linux. Installing it on a second disk is great if you want to keep things separate from Windows. So I'm going to download Parrot OS, going to parrotsec.org, and then going to download, and I'm going to download the live version and the security edition, AMD64, scroll down and download. And I'm also going to download the Debian Live ISO, which later I'll explain why. So going to debian.org and then going to other downloads. And then I'm going to download the live version. So I'll just download the live GNOME. And now I'm going to go into my downloads folder. So I have my two files downloaded. There's Debian Live and Parrot. And I'm going to be mounting the Parrot ISO. So I'll hit enter or right click and mount. Open. And we see all the files there. And then now I'm going to open up disk management. So we'll start disk management. And we see all my drives and partitions here. So there's disk zero. This is where I have Windows installed. This is my SSD drive and it's about 477 gigabytes. And then I have disk one. This is my NVMe drive. This is just a data drive that I have here. And then this is where I'm going to be installing Parrot OS on. And finally, here's the ISO for a Parrot. And so I've mounted it in Windows. So it's only seen here in Windows. And if I want to make it available during boot, I'm going to create a partition so I can boot from it. And so if I check, see how much space it's using. And it's about 5.38 gigabytes. So about 5,800 megs. Cancel. And so I'm going to create a new partition on disk zero here. I'll shrink my C drive to make room. So right click on C drive, shrink volume, 5800, shrink. All right, and there's my unallocated space and I'm gonna select it, right click, new simple volume, next, next, next. And here it asks to select a file system. Now the UFI specs state that it is based on the FAT file system. And if I were to select FAT32, I won't be able to copy everything over from the E drive there as the squashfs file is greater than four gigabytes and four gigabytes is the maximum individual file size limit in FAT32. So I'll be selecting NTFS, but the UFI specs don't mention about NTFS. So will this work? Now this will depend on your BIOS vendor and how they've coded the UFI specs into their firmware. My BIOS is American Megatrends and it is able to detect this partition. Many large motherboard manufacturers out there also use American Megatrends, but they could also be heavily modified, so take that into consideration. And so I'll label it as ISO. Next, finish. All right, and so the new partition has been created. And going back, copy everything from the E drive, go to the new F drive and paste. All right, all the files have been copied over. And then now I'm going to go back into my downloads folder. And now this is where the Debian Live ISO is needed. So I'm going to mount it as well. And I'm going to go into the EFI directory, go into the boot directory, and I'm going to copy the files. And I'm going to go into my F drive, go into the EFI directory, boot, and paste. And I'm going to replace. And this is so that it will be able to read the partition as the existing EFI file is not able. If it can't read the partition, then it won't be able to see the files. And if it can't see the files, then it won't be able to start. And now going back into disk management, and we see here my F drive, it's seen as a healthy basic data partition. So your BIOS should be able to see this partition and be able to boot from it. But if not, it may need to be seen as an EFI system partition. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to open up disk part, start disk part, run as administrator. Yes. Type in list disk. Select disk zero. List my partitions. 
and it's the 5800 megabyte partition. So select partition four, type in help set ID, and then type in set ID equals, and then scroll up. Look for the EFI system partition value in hacks, copy it, and paste. Enter. All right, so that we see here that it's been set, and we go into disk management, we see it's been set as well. And now I'm going to free up some space on my second disk on drive D to make room for a paired OS. So there's my D drive and there's 164 gigs available. So I'll use 80 gigs. So I'll right click, shrink volume. I'll do 80,000, shrink. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that secure boot is disabled. And if you have fast boot, disable it as well. And now I'm going to do a one-time boot into the installation partition. It's labeled as UFI OS. And how I can confirm that? Go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as administrator, type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And at the bottom, you can see that there's device partition F, the F drive that was created, and the description UFI OS. So I'm going to select it. Parrot boot menu comes up, try install enter. All right, it's booted into the live environment and then go to install Debian. And select your language, next. And then your location, next. Keyboard, next. And here it's the partition section. And at the top here, it's asking to select your storage device where you want to install it to. And so it's already selected my NVMe drive, my second disk for me. And then there's four options. The first option, install alongside. The installer will shrink a partition to make room for parrot 6.4. And that's the reason why I shrank the D drive earlier in Windows, because if I were to shrink it here, by selecting the option and then selecting the D drive, and then it would install the EFI system partition only on the first disk. It won't be installing it on my NVMe drive. And I want to keep everything on my NVMe drive, so this option won't work. And the next option is replace a partition, which I don't want to do. I don't want to replace my data drive. And erase disk, I don't want to do at all. And then that leaves manual partitioning. So I'm going to select that and then go to next. And here I'm going to create the partitions. So you want to use the free space and go to create. And the first partition I'll be creating is slash boot partition. And this will be one gig, 1024 megabytes. And the file system will be ext4, out point slash boot, and then OK. Going back to the free space, create the next partition. And then this is going to be for slash boot slash EFI. I'm going to have it as 512 megabytes. File system, FAT32, mount point, slash boot slash EFI. It's going to have the boot flag. OK. Going back to the free space, create. And then the next partition is going to be for swap. So I have 12 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to do 12 gigs here. File system, Linux swap, and then the flag, swap. OK. Going back to free space, go to create. And to keep this simple, I'm going to use the remaining space for everything else. So size, 66 gigs. File system, I'm going to use ext4. And the mount point, I'm going to use slash. And then OK. And then next. And here. Put in your name, username, computer name, and password. And here at the bottom, if you want to log in automatically without asking for the password, so you can check this off. But for me, I want to put in my password each time, so I'm going to leave it unchecked. And then next. And here it gives a summary of everything that it's going to do. The location, the keyboard, and the partitions. So I did manual partitioning. And it's going to be creating a new partition for slash boot. And then the 512 megabytes, it's going to be for slash boot slash EFI. 
and then there's 12 gigs for swap, and then the rest for slash. And then once ready, hit install. Install now. And now it's going to install, so this will take a little bit of time. All right, the installation has completed, and now I'm going to restart. And when I restart, it should go into the Parrot Grub menu. But to confirm, I'm going to hit Done. It'll restart, and I'm going to go into the BIOS. All right, in my BIOS boot order, the Windows Boot Manager is first, and then there's the UFI OS, and Parrot is third. So I'm going to change that so Parrot is first, and then save changes and exit. All right, the Parrot Grub menu comes up, and we've got Parrot, and it's also found Windows, so that's good. So I'm going to go into Parrot. Log in. All right, and it's booted into Parrot. And so if I go to Applications, and then if I go to Pen Testing, for example, and the most used tools, I got Aircrack, Burp Suite, EDB Debugger, Johnny, etc. And I'm going to reboot to ensure I can go into Windows. All right, select Windows. All right, I'm back in Windows, and I'm going to open up Disk Management, Start Disk Management, and we see on my second disk, my NVMe drive, and I have Parrot installed, so there's the slash boot partition, slash boot slash EFI partition, the swap partition, and slash for everything else. And so here is the installation media partition. I no longer need it, so I can remove it. Now if I go and right click, delete volume is grayed out, so I'll delete it in disk part. So I'm going to start disk part, run as administrator, yes. List my disk, select disk zero, list my partitions, and select partition four, and type in delete partition override. So it's been deleted, and I'm going to extend my C drive, extend, next, next, finish. And that's it. That's how you can install Parrot OS on a separate disk without using a USB drive or DVD. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.